Hi, I'm Billy Maddox and I'm gonna mess this up so that you don't have to. Previously on Lightsaber Stand. For someone like me that doesn't want something too ornate or too big to display my lightsabers, I want something that kind of uh, disappears. Shut the fuck up, no one cares. Know your fucking place, trash. <laughs> okay, so, okay, uh, that was a little bit petty, all right. I, 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 can, I can own up to it, that's fine. But look, if you would only listen. What I wanted was something like this that disappears into a shelf that's small. This was made for me, for my uses, for my purposes, to my specs. Because it is what I needed, because I don't like lightsaber stands. So I'm making another one. <laughs> Since, since I got that one and made that one, I got another one. So here I go. Let's spray it up in silver first because we're going to be doing some paint chipping using some liquid latex, uh, which is very cool. So I think mostly this video is to show um, using liquid latex and getting an, uh, a real paint chip kind of uh, paint job because you're actually you know chipping the paint or you're you know you're sort of helping it along so apply this liberally i would apply it thicker than you think you need but only where you need and take some pictures of it because this will dry clear and once you start painting over it you will forget where they are it's happened to me before and uh, it, would, it was a nightmare because i had to then like you know feel around to see if there was something there and then later on I would find one and something would chip off and something you know it was already done so it would mess it up so take pictures of it so you know exactly where to take it off okay now I'm trying to get a real even coat of this orange so I'm going slow even though it looks like it's like pretty full coverage um, it isn't uh, so I think I ended up doing three coats of this, but light coats with, you know, really sort of uh, steady, long strokes so that it doesn't leave too many sort of patches and whatnot. As you can see there, it's a bit translucent, so you're going to need to do a few coats to get a nice, even orange. And here I am. I'm just sort of starting the corners of where the liquid latex is with a thumbtack or a toothpick or anything that has like a sharp, you know, a, a, you know, not a sharp point, but anything that has a point. So you can then sort of get it started and then rub it off. One thing that I will note is that if you go too light with the liquid latex, you run into trouble in trying to take it off. It'll sort of pull off more paint than it should. So that's why I said go heavy with it it will, you'll, you'll be able to see it visibly, which is a good thing, uh, but then also um, it'll kind of stay put, like this one. I went really heavy on it and it, it only took off where the latex was. If you go a bit too light, it's, it sort of starts to pull the paint. You're gonna end up with little kind of hairy little bits of paint, um, inevitably. Um, get, a, get a clean, dry brush and then just two hairs and some air. <laughs> get rid of all those little uh, hanging around bits. Now, for the second part of it, because paint chipping isn't just, you know, that's not going to make it look good enough. It still looks clean. So I'm doing kind of a rust effect by just using yellows and oranges and like a terracotta color that I had there and darkening them, lightening them, and kind of blotching them there until it kind of looks the part. You kind of, you're going to have to sort of work it over and then work it back 
and kind of make it look a bit rusty. Can't really see it here, but you will be able to in the beauty shots later, I promise. <laughs> Now, this is still looking too clean. Okay, we've got areas of chipping. We've got areas of rust. Oh, you can see it there. We've got areas of rust, but the orange is clean. The silver underneath is clean or the, the metal underneath is clean. So, you know, what do we got to do now? <laughs> we've got to weather this up. Okay, so I'm going to take a very diluted, as always, a very diluted, um combination of like black I, I tend to like using this graphite gray or granite gray what does it say i don't know did you read it i didn't read it but I, I end up using this sort of dark gray i kind of like it a little better kind of is a bit more um i don't know i kind of like it a bit more that it's not as harsh as black you know this kind of really feels like um you know sort of oil and dirt and whatnot and black kind of can can be too harsh especially on colors that are bright like this this kind of gives you a really subtle way to to weather now remember water it down um and wipe off or dab off or however you know however you're feeling that day i do a combination of wiping and dabbing depending on where um what i want it to look like you know and, and also, you know, space, you know, you gotta have some space, you gotta be able to sort of get in there. So if dabbing is what, you know, what you can, then, then do that. Um, but yeah, you know, weathering is weathering, you know, dirty it up a little bit, immediately wipe it off, you know, don't cover everything, everything. You kind of want dimension in the color. I wanted some of the orange to look dirty, but then also some of it to stay kind of bright. And actually, after this, um, after I did some of the weathering, I kind of went back and added a bit more straight orange to it, just to sort of give it areas of, um, of like maybe there was an area that was painted over again, you know? You got to give these things a story, you know? If you have a story in your head of why these things are in the condition that they are, uh, then, you know, it'll be it'll be better you'll sort of get into it um so yeah here i'm sort of working back the weathering now by adding some of that straight orange but then kind of also kind of dabbing that off i'm not i'm not um watering this down at all though so keep that in mind um in <laughs> with all honesty i think i went a little crazy on the paint chipping but it's because Whenever I do a tiny little project like this, that's kind of like inconsequential, like it's like just something to keep my hands busy. It's usually because I'm doing a paint test for something else, which I am. So I wanted to, I haven't, I hadn't done the liquid latex in a while. I needed to sort of get back into that. I needed to, I haven't done rust in a while. I wanted to get back into that. So, uh, so yeah, when I work on small projects like this, it's usually because I've got something cooking that's bigger and I need to do a couple little tests. But instead of just doing tests on like a flat piece of plastic, why not do it on something that can then actually be used for something else? Anyway, so here are the beauty shots of the lightsaber stand. Please don't tell me nothing in the comments that you don't like this because I'm not making it for you. I'm making it for me. And that's the point that I was trying to make in that original video. So that commenter, look, my guy, sorry you got some kind of offended or something, but it isn't yours. It isn't for you. And nowhere in that video did I say this is the definitive way to have a lightsaber stand. That would be ridiculous to each their own. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Thanks so much for watching. Roll the thing.